Hey there, welcome to Cloud and Stack. In this video, I want to talk about Entra workload identities. So what they are and how to secure them and how Entra helps you with all of that. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so as I said before, we're talking about Entra workload identities in this video. Uh, what I want to start off by talking about is what are identity workload identities. Essentially think of regular identities in your environment. They are known as human identities. These are users, these are people that you work with, your partners, your vendors, your contractors. They try to authenticate into your, your applications your, to get access to your data legitimately, hopefully, right? So these are user identities. Now, when we think on the flip side, every application on your environment might be working themselves. So they might have to make API calls or make calls to other applications or make calls to other services. These are service accounts. Uh, so oftentimes we see scripts running on premise environments, even scripts running on your servers on prem in legacy environments. They will have ways to authenticate somewhere uh, in order to access a server and run specific tasks and so on and so forth. These are all part of what is defined by Microsoft and some other providers as workload identities. So when we think of workload identities, we might be thinking of other very common terms such as service accounts and service principles, uh, especially if we're talking about cloud. If we're talking about Azure, managed identity is a very common term as well. So these all fall under the same bucket, therefore, workload identities. The term uh, can also expand a little if we're thinking about machine identities. As you see on screen, this is referenced by Microsoft. There are device identities as well that can have uh, different ways to be managed in your environment. This is not part of what I'm talking about here today. I'm talking about workload identities. So this is essentially what workload identities are. Now, when we think a little bit further into what they are is how to secure them or what are the security concerns first related to them. Like I said before, they are hard to manage because you might not even know what's running in your environment. Legacy networks will have scripts that are running in their environment for years. Uh, username and passwords going through the wire uh, for years and they have been left untouched for a long time. So how do you... Uh, properly manage everything that is uh, running your environment silently without uh, you, you having a user attached to it, right? So managing lifecycle is challenging uh, and it's common to not even have the lifecycle process for those applications, right? Or applications sitting in cloud environments. So how to think about that? That's a challenge. Secondly, uh, each application might have multiple identities. So applications can try to authenticate to different services utilizing different secret IDs and application IDs, for example. Uh, these, of course, leads to a higher risk of potential exposure of your secrets uh, and leak leakage of your, your authentication or other data uh, through the web. So that is very concerning. Next up is the ability or the lack thereof of securing access to these uh, applications. It is fundamental to perform multi-factor authentication whenever you can. However, when we're thinking about uh, machines, they cannot perform a challenge, right? So they cannot perform an MFA challenge. So then how do we still protect them securely? So the challenge there is how to perform uh, and apply secure access to these applications. With these security concerns in mind, we can get to the next step, with, which is to how to protect a workload identities of understanding all those different challenges. Essentially, I brought together this piece of information here. Some of this information is from Microsoft. Everything is referenced at the bottom of the slides, as you can see somewhere in there. Now, the thing here is, uh, when we think about managing lifecycle, how Entra and Microsoft can help you protect and, of course, manage your lifecycle a little better is by, of course, removing the need to manage secrets. So removing the need to authenticate utilizing username uh, or uh, application ID and secrets, for example. So utilizing more modern ways to utilize tokens, for example. Uh, secondly, when we think about uh, how to extend the, the uh, access, uh, not the access, but extending the lifecycle management from a wider perspective, we have to think wider than just Microsoft, right, services. And that's when Workload Identity Federation can help extend protection to workloads on Kubernetes, but also even are outside of Azure as well. Uh, lastly there, I thought about bringing that topic here uh, today, although it's not part of Entra Workload Identities, it's still part of Entra. So when we think of uh, 
protecting your service principles, it's important to perhaps review the access, particularly if these uh, service principles are of uh, privileged access, right? So that's where another service within Entra, such as Entra Identity Governance, can help you create access review policies for these highly privileged service accounts, for example, that can help with managing the life cycle there for you. Next up, reducing risks. So how do you reduce risks of leaks? Essentially, you apply conditional access policies that, that are entailed and included within Entra workload identities. We're gonna have a look at that soon in the dashboard, but it's about uh, conditional access policies, but also containing threats uh, with identity protection, right? So signaling and finding out if there are threats potential threats in your environments or risky connections coming in from your workload identities. What risky connections could mean or what a typical travel could mean, it, it's all about what Microsoft flags as part of intra identity protection. Uh, and enforcing secure access is about conditional access policy. So uh, intra workload identities allows us to apply conditional access policies based on uh, risk of connectivity and also location, for example, of connectivities that are coming from your environment, right? So, and we apply those to service principles. There is a next layer of protection there in terms of this life cycle as well. When we think of real-time enforcement of some policies, so within uh, intra conditional access policies in general, there is a feature called conditional access uh, evaluation, CAE. So what that does, it's, it tests in real time the risk of the connection in the session being authenticated. Uh, if there is a change in the risk throughout a, a, a session time, uh, the conditional access might change its verdict and thus changing the entire access to that particular resource or data, right? So that's a very unique capability that's quite uh, interesting there for, for it as well. And lastly, there's uh, the ability to manage custom attrib security attributes for an app, which greatly help you understand how to perform uh, specific secure conditional access to your applications. So what does that look in the portal? I'm going to show you the portal, but I just want to quickly highlight there. Uh, there if you don't have a premium licensing, you can click on a link there uh, if you're a Microsoft uh, 365 Enterprise customer and apply for a 90-day trial for intra workload identities. Here's a, just a quick look at lifecycle management with external parties there in uh, Federation. Very good document there for Microsoft for you to have a look at. And uh, within the risk management or risk flagging capabilities, there is there uh, within the intra portal a dedicated section just for risk uh, workload identities, as you can see there, really helpful. Lastly, the difference between not having a workload identities license and having the license. If you don't have the license, with when you're trying to apply conditional access policy within users, you cannot apply your conditional access policies to workload identities. However, when you are licensed, then what you see is a different text right there in your conditional access policy creation, which reads users or workload identities. So at this point, you can choose workload identities to apply your conditional access policies. So that is particularly, of course, interesting and right up our alley here in terms of protecting those workload identities. Okay, so in the next video of this series, I'm going to help you see how what that looks like in the dashboard with a demonstration of a leakage of information. So I'm going to have a look at that and prepare that in the in an upcoming video. Hope you stick around. If you do, make sure you subscribe and leave a like uh, or leave a comment as well if you think there is any improvement that needs to be done. Otherwise, thank you and cheers.